David here, I'm back with you. All right, what are we talking about? We're talking about Saving America. We've got a new TV series, Saving America, on davidhevener.tv exclusive. But my question is not how are we going to save America. My first question is, is America going to be around to save? Meaning, you know, you hear this thing that nations only last about 250 years and then they kind of fizzle away. All right. Well, I think we're up to like 248 years for America, whatever. And is America in the Bible? Is it in prophecy? I've had some uh, great uh, 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 teachers tell me, show me. Yes. And I've had some say no. Well, I have a special guest here tonight. We're going to ask him what God has laid on his heart regarding America. Okay. Is it in by is America going to be around, Mr. Sherlock, Pastor Sherlock, Bali? Pastor, you there, buddy? I'm here, my brother. All right, good to have you. Thank you. All right, so Sherlock, um, America. Yes. Is America in the Bible anywhere? Is America going to be around? Yes, uh, it is. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, David and. Uh, let me give you a premise, and then I'll give you uh, a bunch of information. And please interrupt me whenever you need to. Uh, 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 so the common consensus is that the word America isn't mentioned, so she's not there. Well, the word rapture isn't mentioned, but there is one. The word Trinity isn't mentioned, so there is one. So because of the lack of the mention of the word America, it's an untenable argument to think that she's not there. That's number one. Number two. There are people that try to paint a picture, create a narrative, and then reflect a debate on America uh, that she is so evil and that everything is going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, uh, if God doesn't, if God doesn't judge America, they say he'll have to raise up Solomon tomorrow. But what they don't tell you is, if there were ten righteous people in Sodom, God would have saved them. But let me explain, and then I would. You you brought up a very interesting point about uh, uh, Thanksgiving, and I want to uh, kind of connect that to America. There are people that say that America and the Roman Empire are running parallel paths. One, both were hedonistic, uh, filled with pleasure. Both had powerful military uh, and economic machines. Both had a slave problem. Both were a great welfare state with welfare emphasis, with a drain on the government. Both had an eagle for a symbol. Both had a place called Capitol Hill. Both had senates. Both had stadiums, one race chariots, we race cars. Both had flags. Both had a steady flow of foreigners. Both had some unemployment. But he, uh, David, what they do not tell you, you see, they stop there because it satisfies the debate and the narrative and creates the perception and the optics. What they don't tell you is at the time when the Roman Empire under Vespasian, Otho, Galba, uh, Titus, uh, Diocletian was at its worst, God raised 12 men called apostles, and they shifted the tide of human history. They don't tell you that. So I say to you today, yes, there is evil in our country, yes. There is challenge in our country, yes. There is a lot of fraudulent activity in our country. But there is a remnant of people that God has reserved for this moment. And David, it has never been the moral majority it's always been the spiritual minority that the Bible calls the remnant. I want to present Revelation 3, 7. It says this, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and he that shutteth and no man openeth. And that was written to the church of Philadelphia. Now think about that. Philadelphia, an open door, a shut door. We step into the door. We have given the key of David, and we have the move of holiness and truth. Holiness on the inside, truth on the outside. God is saying to this end-time church that we believe is the remnant church, if you study the chapter. We believe to be the rapture church when you study the chapter. God is saying, isn't it strange, David, that this is the church of Philadelphia? Isn't that strange? Why? Because in 2016... When our president needed 20 votes to go over in the Electoral College, guess where it came from? Pennsylvania. Philadelphia. It was never supposed to be that. God wow. broke a 
pro God broke a political pattern to prove a prophetic point. It's almost like when you see Israel, you see a reflection, or the United States, you see a reflection of Israel, if, if I'm hearing you right, wow. that the way we treat Israel yes. is the way God is going to deal with us. Yes. There's wow. a pattern of, of, of numbers and names yes. that happen in, in <laughs> Judeo that occurs in Christian yes. or Christian. Wow. You, you, you know, when people tell me that America is not mentioned in prophecy, the most prolific mention in prophecy is the support of Israel. If you bless them, I'll bless you. If you curse them, I'll curse you. Now, can I give you a few points here? I think will be revolutionary to the understanding of the listeners. I am saying Absolutely. to you that America is the only Judeo-Christian nation in the world, only, which means we have a secular form of government built on a religious scale of values that is colored by a past uh, uh, cementing of Judaic mortars. Let me explain. Israel was founded to take their Torah to the nations. We were founded to take the gospel to the nations. If you check the tribe of Joseph as Ephraim and Manasseh, there wasn't 12 tribes, there was 13. We were settled with 13 colonies. Israel's capital, Jerusalem, is not a part of any tribe. America's capital, Washington, is not a part of any state. Israel had three groups, the kings, the priests, the prophets. We have three groups, the judicial, the executive, the legislative. Israel left Egypt to escape persecution. We left Europe. Israel is called the little Satan. We are called the big Satan. Israel is the first republic founded on the fixed laws of God. We are the second, but hear this. A sea of water separated them from the promised land, the Red Sea. A sea of water separated the Puritans, the Atlantic Ocean. Both Israel and America had to deal with Babylon. Babylon destroyed their temple. Modern day Iraq, old Babylon, Al-Qaeda came from there, tore down the temple of our finance. May the 14th, 1948 is important to Israel. Their independence. May the 14th, 1607 is important to us, our first colony. And hear this, my friend. We are the only two nations that were divided between the North and the South, fought based on taxation and slavery. Israel and America are mirror images of each other. I want you to hear the words of my guests because God really is, is firing up here and saying some amazing things. So this is about you, no matter where you live, okay? But we're just using America as a symbol right now. My guest, uh, Dr. Sherlock Bali. Uh, Sherlock, America, um, with the election, yes. with this movement, how, does this, how do you see this tying into prophecy? Do you? Yes. And I, I do, David. I do. I believe that this is the moment that God is awakening. The night is far spent. Now be awakened. That an awakening call is coming to a few, not a majority. And I, right. I believe that our country, wherever it goes, whichever direction it goes, that remnant is going to be raised to the voice. I also believe and please interrupt me whenever you, you choose to. I also believe that what has happened with our president, President Trump, is that a movement has been created that is absolutely astonishing that will not die. Right. Yes, a absolutely. You know, uh, Sherlock, I said this on my last week's show, is that when I saw that movement in Washington, it's the first time. And I'm not yes. saying all these people were Christians, but right. they were standing for someone that, that backed us up, Christians yes. up, our, basically our principles. And they, they stood up to the face of the enemy and they said, no, yes. this yes. is our man. We will not move. We yes. march forward. You are absolutely right. We turned a corner. It was a paradigm shift. Okay. Yes. And what's going to happen is God's people are going to pick up on that and be fueled by that yes. and going to move forward, not caring what, hey, bring it on, baby, bring it on. Yes. Remember Rocky? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's, it's then Sherlock is when God is yeah. real. People are going to see God's fire. They're going to see what's really happening. Yeah. Are we in the tribulation? Are we on the cusp of it? Where yes. are we? Oh, man. Dude, that is such a powerful question. Can I read something to you? 
Sure. Let, uh, 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 let me read this to you. It's astonishing. When these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift up your head. Then I want to go to the book of Matthew. Uh, uh, hear this. Uh, uh, you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. All these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. I want you to hear this. In the Bible, there are terms such as the end, the end time, the latter time, the latter days, the time of the end. What a lot of prophetic preachers or teachers are not telling the people is inserted into that prophetic period is another period called the beginning of the end. Which means when the world is crying end, apocalypse, we will not get over COVID. Millions will die. When the world is saying end, God is saying beginning. It is called the beginning of, there is a prophetic period inserted in this end time scenario called the beginning of the end, where beginnings are marked in three dimensions. One, the beginning of the latter reign. Two, the beginning of the latter glory. And three, the beginning of the execution of the key of David, which is associated with Philadelphia. It is an amazing time to be alive. And David, I want to say one thing. All these things must come to pass. Are we heading to a global order? Yes. Are we heading to a global mark? Yes. Are we heading to are we heading to surveillance society? Yes. Are we heading to new world religion? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, we are. But inserted in that time is a beginning. So we want to declare to the people when everybody is shouting ending, God is saying beginning. What do you see as the next? pivotal turn, the next happening, the next event that's going to take us to the next level of the beginning of the end? All right. That, that's a great question. I believe that we have to keep looking at Israel. Israel is the center of the world. Jerusalem is the center of Israel. And the Temple Mount is the center of Jerusalem. Those are three epicenters that guide the world. Not just a minute. We must keep our eyes on Jerusalem. We must keep our eyes on the future treatment of America with Israel. And we must keep our eyes on the possibility of the rebuilding of a third temple. But concomitant to that, it is my belief that in America, there is going to be a... T David, I am really thrilled to see your your direction. I mean, it is probably one of the best I've seen when I've been interviewed. You, wow. the Lord, has put you on the edge of what he's doing. I believe the next turn in America is the discovery and the emergence of the 7,000 like Elijah in the cave coming out with a voice of power that will not be denied and will not be afraid.